Oh no, I dropped the clip. Oh no. Oh no. <laughs> Hey there, I'm Jer, and welcome back to the C4 Restoration Diary series. Today we're tackling a couple things. Uh, the heater core bypass valve, need to fix that on my car, and the IAC valve. So first on the agenda is the heater core bypass. So check this out. So basically been looking out at my car this morning. When I first got up this morning, you know, I, I look out my window and just, uh, I don't know, just look outside. And I noticed this wet spot underneath my car. So I thought it rained or drizzled or maybe there was some condensation somewhere or windshield froze. I don't know. And it just uh, dripped some water on the side and didn't think too much about it. Here it is five hours later. The puddle is still here, which means this is not water. So... Could only be a couple fluids, that's clear, coming out of the car, right? So that is obviously antifreeze. So I have some kind of leak coming out of my heater system because last week I refilled my radiator because it was starting to get warm. And I noticed that the fluid was pretty low. It was about down to here or something like this. And my overflow was pretty low. Put a half gallon in this thing, top that off, Fill that up. Now that's low again, and that is pretty much empty again. So I'm like, oh no, heater core has gone out. The dreaded heater core on a C4, because you know you have to tear the whole dash apart <laughs> to get to it because it's inside of the car. But where it's leaking is actually outside. Opened up the door, felt the carpet and everything on the inside, it felt good. So looking more closely at it, can definitely see how it's wet down there. It's also wet on top of that connector, which means it can only be coming from pretty much right here. So this is um, <clears throat> some kind of a vacuum. Yeah, it looks like it's a vacuum controlled thing. And what it does is I'm assuming it will uh, close the line. This is probably my inlet from, from my water pump. And that's probably closing the line going to the uh, heater core to keep the car from uh, getting super hot in the summer. And it looks like it's leaking out of the actual seal. So that's got a rod that's going into here and it's actuating that open and closed and that looks like that's where it's leaking. So to Oh my goodness, to get this thing fixed, that's going to be a bit of a bear, it looks like, but it looks like it's doable, so I bet I can just bypass this and hook directly to that hose and to this hose here coming out of my uh, preheater, whatever this, the heater that goes into the... Uh, mass airflow sensor thing, whatever the heck that is. <laughs> Actually, that's the mass airflow sensor. That is the throttle, whatever, for uh, my TBI. So yeah, people do a lot of disabling of that to uh, get more horsepower out of the car in the summer, but I drive my car in the winter. I wonder if that's the other reason why this switch is on here. Uh, Maybe that comes out and goes in there. Anyways, I bet if I bypass this, fill it back up, that should fix my problem. So I need to get this hose off, get a coupler, and then get another hose and connect the two together and do a test. But it's not catastrophic. At least it looks like it's not my heater core. Bet this will be something else that I need to fix that probably is not manufactured. <laughs> so to get to use one of these, Man, it looks like these pipes are all connected together and they're one system. 
They probably are. Eek. Oh well, figure that out. Well, apparently they do make this thing. And this is the one I need. I need the one that has the nipple on it, I believe, because there was a that, that little hose right there that actually, the vacuum hose that controls it. <laughs> Strange. So the other one doesn't have that, but it's the same price. So yeah, brand new, 140 bucks, or used was 90. Both of these were available on Corvette Central. So there you go. But I'm gonna still bypass it temporarily because I bet that's what the problem is. So you may be wondering what this bypass is for. Basically, your heater works by uh, using the hot radiator fluid or coolant that's running through the car that's hot and it passes it through a little mini radiator or heater core inside of your dash. The heater core is inside of your car and there's a fan on one side of it, that thing's hot and it blows air through it and that's what generates heat. Pretty simple, right? In the summer, you don't want your heater core that's inside of your car in the dash to be super hot. Even though you have a climate control system with air conditioning, you don't want that thing to be super hot inside of your car generating unwanted heat. So that's what the heater bypass does. A valve will close, and that's what is controlled by that little teeny tiny vacuum hose. That's the valve, it will close it. If you have your, your HVAC system set to cool, then that valve should close and you're not gonna get any warm water going to your heater core inside the car, and that should help keep the car much cooler in the summer. And you would think this is a new invention. Oh no, it's been around for a very long time. Even my Tri-5s that were made in the 50s have heater bypass on them if you have the deluxe system. My 63 GMC truck, it has a heater bypass built into it. So this is just a electronic version of the same thing controlled with a vacuum hose. My plan at first was just to bypass the valve and hook up the heater core manually so it's just always running it's winter or it's getting cold the time of year that I was working on it I believe was fall and it's starting to get cold so I don't care if it's always running I'll fix it in the spring and that will save me some money theoretically I can just use some hoses to bypass this valve and hook up the heater core directly okay so got this disconnected I sliced the bottom radiator hose and left the upper one. Well, I guess heater hose, it's not really for the radiator because I didn't want to pull too hard and put too much pressure on this because the other side of this is the heater core and I don't want to damage that. But I goofed that up a little bit, prying my screwdriver in there and trying to get the uh, hose to come forward. So I'll just bend that back as best I can with some baby needle nose pliers. And then I'm just gonna uh, totally remove this bottom hose and have it just run the entire length to here on uh, that inlet and leave the bottom one connected. And I did see it when I, after I started the car and moved it over to here to the street, because I knew it was gonna leak some coolant, um, it, did, uh, it was dripping out of here. So that is definitely where it is dripping from. So this should fix that problem. Okay, so there is a flaw in my plan. This is not going to work. <laughs> There's a stupid connection right here. This is actually a connection point. I kind of noticed that earlier, but uh, yeah, it's definitely connected. So I am hosed because this pipe needs to be connected. And also for that, because that goes down into here. So it's definitely for something. Shoot. I could put this tubing in here and put a T and connect that that way. That would bypass it. Or I could just fix it right. Damn it. So I tried to install all these bypass hoses and as soon as I started the car and coolant was pouring out somewhere else, I realized that it was a little bit more complicated than I originally first thought. Now I could have made this work. I could have bought a bunch of tees and hoses and clamps and I could have bypassed this uh, 
I could have bypassed the bypass just fine, but by that point, after all that work, I might as well just go ahead and do it right. So that's what I did. I ordered a new one off of Corvette Central. It came in pretty quickly, and I went ahead and installed it. It's just basically two connections on each end. It was a pretty simple procedure. In fact, it was so simple, I didn't even film that part of it. You know, it's just a couple connections on each side. You don't need to see all that. But I was having some issues burping the system and getting all the air um, out of my cooling system. Finally, after days and days, I have the uh, radiator flushed or uh, burped. Got all the air out of the system to uh, hook up my uh, problem with the... Uh, Yeah, so I replaced that plumbing fitting on the other side. Finally got this tube replaced. Um, and uh, the hardest thing actually was burping the radiator. Um, the instructions in the shop manual say to turn the car on, let it heat up, and then once the thermostat opens, you can feel the uh, um, radiator hose is gonna be warm. Mine never got warm and it kept slowly gurgling out of this thing no matter what I did. So the instructions say, do that, and then the level will drop and then you fill it up, keep the car running. I had to shut the car off and then I was able to put in a bunch of coolant, like at least a half a gallon and then put some more in there. And then that way when it cooled down, it would suck it in, draw in the reserve from there. And now it seems fine. Now my heater and everything is working. So I think I finally got rid of the air bubble on that. And now the problem with my heater bypass has been solved. Yay! Let's go ahead and start getting into problem number two now. I noticed problem number two when I was working on problem number one inside of the car. I also discovered a problem. Look. So this cold air injector thing, whatever whatever that is right there, that uh, it, that might be the reason why uh, my car runs rough at idle, because that's never been hooked up. <laughs> I don't know why. So maybe it's bad. So I'll, those are apparently relatively cheap, so I'll replace it and plug that bad boy back in, and hopefully that will fix that issue. So the IAC, the idle air control, is installed into your throttle body. And that is on all fuel injected systems in, in the 80s, I believe. It's definitely on all these C4s, because there's only the one motor, but it was in a lot of cars. Even my Fiero has an IAC in it, and it's a completely different system, but it's still fuel injected. So GM loved these IAC valves. The IAC is controlled by the ECM, which is the computer, and the computer tells it to either open or close and add more or less air to your system when it's at idle. If you're familiar with carburetors, it's a lot like a choke on a carburetor. Choke is just decreasing or adding air to your carburetor when you're very first trying to start it. This is more for after it started, but it's still kind of the same principle. The valve moves forward and back. When it moves forward, it is closing the system. It's closing all the air off into the system. It's got a little plunger on it and it shoves inside of there and plugs the hole. When it moves backwards, it is actually opening up the air port, not the kind that flies. When your car is at idle and your throttle plate is closed, that is when the IAC is going to kick in and start doing its thing. So the computer is going to sense the idle speed and some other conditions and it's going to go, okay, the car is about to die. I need to add more air to the car and that should make it start running faster and that's what the computer does. So if the idle speed is too low, it will open itself up, let more air in and the car should idle a little bit higher. The opposite happens when it closes. When the idle speed is too high, the ECM or the computer will say, hey, this thing's idling way too high, man. We need to close that IAC valve and decrease that extra air going into the motor and that will it'll choke it off and decrease your idle speed. It's a pretty simple system. It could be more complicated. Thank goodness it's not more complicated than that. 
it's kind of blind in the way that it works. It's just hoping that by opening and closing that valve, it's going to adjust your idle speed. If everything else is working perfectly, then that will work. That IAC moves in steps. So I don't know how many steps there are, but it goes into a series of steps. That way the computer can say, hey, fully closed, fully, fully open, or somewhere in between. The only way to read uh, where the computer thinks that the IAC is at is you need to have a scan tool for that. The main thing to keep in mind is the IAC affects idle only. If you are having a hard start issue, don't worry about your IAC because it's not a starting um, circuit. It's only when the car is running. So it's not exactly like a choke because choke will help start the car. Uh, IAC will not help start the car. That's a whole bunch of other things that you need to look at. So today I'm going to get to this valve down here that's unplugged and replace it. So to get to that, I think I have to remove this whole front uh, throttle body in intake because that's where the throttle is. So I guess that's the throttle body. So I'm going to take the, uh, the hose off and then look underneath here and see if I can get to that or not. I don't think I can, but hopefully I can just remove these four bolts and this gasket won't fall apart. And then I'll be loose enough to where I can get a wrench in there. If not, I'll have to completely remove that thing. I do not know. Uh, it's really close. I can almost get to this. This nut's in the way. Maybe if I just take that out, put a wrench on here, I can loosen that. So let's let's see if that will work. Well, unfortunately, I have no wrench that is this size. So I'm going to have to, uh, I mean, I can't even get my uh, adjustable crescent wrench on there. I don't, I, the big giant one will fit. But yeah, I have some big sizes here and none of them are close. So I'm going to have to use some uh, channel lock. So I'm going to take that bolt out and see what happens. All right. Here it is now with that bolt removed. I don't know if there's enough clearance in here to even get. Because there's a bracket that's like in the way on the bottom of it. There's a stupid bracket right here. I don't even know if I can get a tool underneath there. And that bracket is, well, I can't even see down there. I don't know if I can get that off or not. Well, yeah, I cannot get a tool underneath here because this bracket's in the way. So I'm gonna take this hose off. I've already unplugged that, that's super easy. So hose, hose, another hose, and then those uh, throttle cables on the other side, which are clips, and that should be easy, I guess. All right, got uh, these just pried off super easy. This has coolant in it. I just put it back on a couple weeks ago and I gotta take it back off again. See if anything comes out. Ugh. Yep, a little bit of a mess, but it stopped. Good, okay. Everybody just sit in place here, okay. All right, that's everything on this side, I think. Now I just need the throttle cables on the other side. And right, let's get a little bit of video of this. This is super easy to get off. It just uh, has a hole in the back of it. So you just basically push it forward, it snaps off. These other two, they have clips. So this one, you just gotta bend back a little bit here. Clip is now off and there we go. I'm gonna put the clip back on so I don't lose it. And now this back one. Yeah, it's exactly the same way. Getting to it is a little more difficult, but it's mainly because I can't see. <laughs> That's the biggest challenge for me is, there it goes, it's off. Oh, I think, oh, come on, yeah. Shoot, no, it's not off. There you go. Now I can see it. <clears throat> kind of need one more hand here. Come on. <clears throat> oh no, I dropped the clip. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. 
Oh no, okay, I gotta find that clip. <laughs> oh, I can't see it, so I'm gonna get a magnet. <laughs> oh, 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 it magically appeared, yay. <laughs> so that's how that works, okay. So this stupid clip, the way it works is, uh, the. let me get, where's that damn screwdriver? So this dumb clip, you lift this, you lift this part right here. So yeah, it's you, you lift this front part and then you push it off. So it's fixed now. I'm gonna put this in my magnetic parts tray. 10 millimeter bolts in the front. I really hope this gap, and they're not, they don't feel like they're tightened down very hard at all. So now this whole thing should just pop right off. Hopefully, and I don't tear that gasket. That is what I am dreading. Okay. Yeah, those are all not very tight. Is there another thing on the bottom of this connected? Oh, I think there's one more. Oh, there is, there's one more hose on the bottom here. But I should be able to get this off now. All right, I'm gonna get a rubber mallet and whack it. Is there something holding this on or am I supposed to pry it off? There's a pry point. Huh. Huh. Uh. Ah, oh, there it goes. Okay. Pry point. That works. So down there is a little little pry point. Okay, gasket. Do not. There. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah, everything's off except for two more little hoses here. That might be good enough now anyways to where I can get to that. Valve, whatever the heck it's called. The, whatever that cold start valve is called. There, yeah, I can totally get to it now. Cool, so now I can get to it. I'm not even gonna unhook the other side. That is good enough. Okay, I'm gonna move the camera so you can see on this side. Okay, so let's see if I can get this thing off with channel locks. I do not know, because I do not have the right size. Ah, there it goes, yay. Come on, baby, come off. <clears throat> I do not have the right size wrench. Arr. I should look at the threads on it, huh? Oh gosh, I just dropped that. Yeah, they're standard threads. It's got blue, or it's got some kind of Loctite on it, so that's why it's kind of hard to get off. Okay, so let's... Uh, oh, okay, it snapped back. I'm like, where did it go? <laughs> Freak me out. Okay, come on, baby, come off. Uh, that is on there, good. Okay, there it goes. How am I gonna get this thing on? That is on there really tight. Okay, here it goes. Cool, okay, so now it's gonna be off here in a second and just put the new one in and put it back together. Simple as that. Okay, here's the old one. See, it's got the red stuff on it. It's probably some type of sealant. Okay, let's get the new one in. Look at the difference. Now I wonder if that means <laughs> it's the wrong one, which I hope not, or that's why it's not working right, because 
It's completely stuck. Looks like it's stuck in the out position because you can see how it's still a little bit silver on the bottom. And there's a little gasket on it. So I gotta make sure the gasket's not there. Okay. Oh, now I gotta tighten this bad boy. Or this is just tight enough. Well, that seems tight enough. Okay, that's tight enough. Okay, now for reassembly. My gasket looks good. <sighs> Everything in here, <laughs> clean enough. Didn't tear my gasket. Uh, oh, look, this little damn vacuum hose came off the bottom. Gotta make sure I put that back on. Okay, all right. That's, that's that. Let's plug this bad boy in now. Golly. Ooh, I can put this thing back on too. Be a little easier right now. I'm gonna actually switch it back around. This hose on the bottom. That. Okay. And this goes back on here. Look at that. Yeah, easy peasy. Lemon squeezy. That's not too hard of a job at all, really. Ah. Uh, I gotta get the dang thing lined up before I tighten it down too much. Uh, okay. All right. Okay. Gonna start uh, tightening some stuff down and putting it back together. All right, got that hose clamp tightened now. Got that thing plugged in. So the, this is the other cooler hose on this side, and this is the cooler hose. This is just, I guess, air going through that hose. Don't really know what that one is. People like to uh, uh, get the coolant out of here to get like half of a horsepower extra <laughs> so you can't drive it in the winter. My car's all year long, so I want that to work. This plug back on. There we go. So this side is kind of buttoned down now. Let's get the other side going. Okay. You don't need to see all that. That's boring. Okay, so now we're on the other side. We're on the uh, driver's side here. Um, this little air hose came off the bottom, so double check that. Make sure you get that put back on there because I'm sure that's for something important. Okay, let's put these clips back on. Okay. That should be really easy to put this on. This should just slide forward and that's it. Do not drop it again. Ugh. There. There, it's on. Okay. That one's on. Jeez Louise, I keep trying to drop these things and lose them. This one I could see. Eek. I mean, the front of the motor is right there. I could drop it down into the abyss of the front of the motor and that would be terrible. Who knows how hard or easy it is to get these clips. And this one just goes huh, like that, I guess. Oh, 
a little bit more. There we go. Now it's clipped on. Okay. Put the hose back on and then we're done. Okay, so I really don't know what to expect here. Let's just turn the key, see what happens. Aha! Uh -huh. Look at that. It starts right up, no hesitation. Let's go check out the engine compartment because I see some smoke. <laughs> this might be uh, coolant leaking or something. Yeah, it's got coolant on the manifold. Oh, the air conditioning just turned on. Scared the hell out of me. Okay. Now my idle might be too high because I adjusted it way back in 2017 to compensate for this problem. So I'm not going to let it warm up because uh, I want to change the fan belt too today. So way back in 2017, I turned up the idle right here where you're not supposed to do it. So I might be able to turn that back down now. Hell yeah. Cool. All right, let's see if I can turn the idle down. I don't know how much I turned it up. to be at when it's cold. Oh, there it goes. Oh, there it goes. Now the, that's the computer doing that. Okay, okay. Okay, cool. All right, I'm at six, six to seven digital RPM <laughs> gauge. <laughs> okay. Cool. All right, let's give that a shot and see how it goes. When I pulled mine out and looked at it, the IAC was in the fully extended position, which means it was closing the idle air circuit, which means the idle would be lower. And that's why I manually had to turn up the idle with that screw. So that all jives and makes sense. So that means I am on the right track here. I've seen a lot of things in some forums and on Facebook where people are talking about resetting their computer after they change their IAC. Now that might be true for newer computers and, and newer vehicles, but on mine, my 87, that was not needed to, to reset the valve. You just start the car, turn it off really quick, and that's it. And then it's reset. So mine is a simple procedure. I don't need to do a bunch of wacky stuff to reset it. You might on a different vehicle with a different year. I don't know, but mine seems to be working. Okay, well, this seems like a good time to do another cold start, literally. Now I have high confidence that the car will start right up. No problems. All right. Volts. I think it gets so low because the fuel pump and everything's running. I'm going to leave the radio and everything on. How did it work out? Yeah, see? Oh, and the heater's on, of course. Yeah, starts right up. Look at that. Yeah, everything's happy now. Cool. That means I can get remote start in this bad boy, finally. Ha-ha. Okay, so it definitely will work fine. Now... Yes, so that uh, stupid valve, that air idle control, whatever that is, fixed my problems. Okay, cool. Starts no problem. Current temperature, according to the Corvette, is 31. Ah, nice and toasty. It's actually a couple degrees warmer than it says. <laughs> okay, good enough. Cool. Nice. Well, that seems to have fixed my idle problem. Yay! Next time on the to-do list, we're going to tackle changing the wipers because those things have never fit or worked right on my car. And we're going to change the fan belt. So don't forget to subscribe if you'd like to see that video when it comes out or any other videos that are here on my channel. And also don't forget to leave me a comment if you have any questions or concerns or just general feedback for me. Thank you so much 
for hanging out with me on the C4 adventure thus far. Have a fantastic day and happy C4ing. <laughs>